So, the first thing I'd love to ask you is, has What Is Life or Schrodinger um, influenced you in any way throughout your career as a scientist? Definitely uh, Schrodinger specifically. So I'm a physicist by training. Um, so I did both my undergraduate and my graduate degree in physics. Um, so Schrodinger was always somebody that I adored uh, intellectually. Um, the fact that he was asking questions not just about the physical nature of the universe, but also about how that creates human life and consciousness, I think is really important. And that transition or that extension from physics to neuroscience is something that characterizes my field as well. Um, so starting in physics and then now asking questions about how the brain is organized and how that creates thought. So you're a physicist, but you work in complex um, systems. Could you explain what that is and how that works? Yes, yes. So a complex system is one that is composed of many little parts and where those parts are interacting with one another in a complicated way. Um, so it's not a crystal. A crystal is one where it's composed of many parts, atoms, but they are interacting in a very structured way. Um, in complex systems, it's where those interactions are actually very heterogene heterogeneous and it's difficult to parse exactly the organization. And how does your work, you know, where do you see your work going in the next few years within that area? I think what we're trying to do is to build mathematical models of the brain from a complex systems perspective and to understand how large-scale behaviors like human cognition can emerge from very small units like neurons and their interactions with one another. Um, so it's, it's trying to really bridge the, the parts and their interactions that occur at very small scales to the large-scale emergent behavior of human thought. And what about then beyond your research? Do you think that the work that you do will have a broader impact on science? I think it has the potential to change how we think about um, neurological disease and, and psychiatric disorders because it changes. We think now that diseases like um, schizophrenia and autism are more uh, network pathologies, so they are problems with not just a single region of the brain, but with a distributed set of regions and their interconnections. So by understanding that, now we can change the way that we intervene, the medications that we develop, um, the therapies that we offer, the interventions that we suggest. So I think it has a potential to really change how we think about mental health. And what do you think are the benefits of days like today where researchers from lots of different disciplines are getting together to have a conversation about similar things. I mean, you as a, a physicist working in an area where I'm sure you work a lot with neuroscientists and biologists and evolutionary biologists, probably lots of different disciplines. What do you think is the benefit of that? What can we get from these big conversations? I think it's a wonderful opportunity for very new ideas and to see connections between disciplines that we may not stumble on normally because we go to conferences about our particular discipline and we read papers in our particular discipline. But a meeting like this where you can hear from people from such a diverse set of backgrounds I think is really important because we will hopefully be able to see um, and draw out connections that may help us to push the fields forward. Thank you very much. Thank you.